Good morning, or depending on when you're watching this, good afternoon, good evening, or good night. My name is Ross from PTCG Radio, and I'm back with a new kind of video. This was suggested by some of the watchers of my previous videos, and they have suggested that I do a little bit of a deck breakdown, where I go through the deck which I am using in my videos. And I thought that was a pretty darn good idea. And if you like it, make sure that you obviously subscribe and give it a like and tell all your friends because if nobody watches, what's the point in doing this? So what I'm going to be doing here is just going through the deck. There's no game at the end of this. I've seen some other people who have done deck breakdowns immediately followed by a game. That makes for a very long video where you end up either stopping halfway or skipping halfway through it. It just makes no sense. So this is the TDK deck, which I have been using for a couple of videos. Now, the ones against the Mill Tank decks, I had a very slightly different list. I'll point out the changes as I go along. But this is a list I've been using for the more recent games against the um, Darkrai list and the two Evertail lists, I should say, and the other videos I've done since then. So if we take a look at this list, we've got the Ordinary Constituent Pass. We have Thunderous. He's got the attack Raid and Knuckle for 30 damage. Attach an energy card from your discard pile to one of your benched Team Plasma Pokemon. And this is absolutely brilliant early game just to get more energy on your field. Now, it's better for more than just that. Against Evil Town, this is 60 damage. Time you add on Deoxys, Muscle Band, and Laser Bank, you can be getting one hit KOs quite nicely with that. The second uh, attack, Thunderous Noise, which does 90 damage, can be quite useful. It can be a pretty useful attack. Generally, against something like Pyroar, where they're struggling for energy, you can just knock them off and win that way. Or it gets a immediate one hit KO against Evil Tau. Of course you've also got four energy on and as we know Evil Tau does a lot of damage depending on how much energy you've got on you so it's not something you want to be relying on but it can be quite good. And that's base 90 damage especially when you start beefing it up with Deoxys with Muscle Band and with Laser Bank can add up pretty darn quickly. The other card that we've got to have in here is Deoxys and there's four of these because I like having lots of them in the game. Now you never use four at a time and often you don't even need three down so I could see an argument for cutting down to three and I may do that in the future but for now I'm happy with four. Now his ability Power Connect is what we're using him for mainly. It adds 10 damage to the attacks of all Team Plasma Pokemon except Deoxys EX. This allows you to do lots of damage very quickly with Thunderous and with Kyurem, and it makes for a very good deck indeed. But don't sleep on Deoxys. He's got Helix Force. If you've got Plasma Energy, it does 30 times the amount of energy on the opponent's Pokemon, plus 30. So if I've got a Pokemon with free energy facing me, I'm going to be doing 120 damage. Now I can't add to that with Deoxys, but I can still add to that with uh, Muscle Band and Laser Bank. Muscle Band adding 20, Laser Bank adding 30. So if I'm facing against a Caldeo EX with free energy, I'm going to get the one hit KO if I've got a Laser Verbank and a Muscle Band. It can also be pretty good against cards like um, Evil Tau if they add lots of energy on. It can KO Muse, opposing Mewtwo's with just a Psychic and a Colorless Energy. And of course, it can also be pretty darn good against random Pokemon. For instance, if you're facing a Bufalont, they're going to have free energy on, which means that Deoxys EX can KO them for just an energy and a Psychic. Because of course, they're going to have free energy, that's going to do 120. Time you take into account Bufalont's ability, that's going to come out at a nice even 100. So, although it's in there mainly to add damage, it's also got a pretty nice attack. The one thing I will say about Deoxys EX is you have to be very careful with his retreat cost of 2. You will see this in the longer Evil Tail video. There's two I'm going to be posting very soon. In the longer one, this does become a liability. Now, I play a bunch of Escape Ropes and a Scramble Switch for this very reason. Do be aware that Deoxys is catcher bait and you can't just attach one energy and retreat. Especially in my build where I'm not playing any double colourless energy, you have to be very careful. And then we get to what might be the main attacker in the deck, Kyurem. He's got two very good attacks. The first one, Frostbeard, does 30 damage plus 30 to the bench for a water colourless. And Colrus Machine allows you to add a 
plasma energy from the deck and obviously as we all know uh, energy acceleration from the deck is absolutely phenomenal now this 30 doesn't look like much time you start adding in deoxys muscle band and laser bank this maxes out at 30 plus the 4 for deoxys is 70 plus the 2 for muscle band is 90 plus the 3 for laser bank is 120 and that's before you hit for weakness or anything like that and of course you're doing 30 to the bench as well the second attack is blizzard burn and that does 120 which is brilliant because of course time you start adding muscle band, deoxys and laser bank and I know I'm saying that a lot but that really is a major facet of this deck because of the laser and the muscle band and the deoxys all of these attacks do a lot more than you think they're going to do when you first look at them Th this is one hit KOing EXs quite easily and you'll see this in the videos I've already posted with this deck Again, um, it's only Evil Tower I've played that's got the e EXs in but you can see it in those games and you'll probably see it in ones further forward. Now you do need to water energy on Kyurem so it is important to note that you can't get this going in one turn. You need to have a water, by which I of course mean a plasma or a rain, uh, excuse me, a prism or a rainbow on it and then do the whole prism or rainbow plus chorus machine combo but to be honest a lot of the time you don't need blizzard burn a lot of the time frost spear is going to be two hit KOing and spreading to the bench at the same time do take note that blizzard burn does stop you attacking next turn it doesn't just stop blizzard burn it stops any attack the following turn and Kyurem has a retreat cost of free now i could be playing caldeo ex and floatstone there are a couple reasons why i'm not caldeo ex has rushing which allows you to put him active Floatstone free retreat. First of all, bench space. I want really three attackers, three Deoxys, or two attackers, four Deoxys. I don't have the bench space. Secondly, Startling Megaphone is very, very popular at the moment, and if they play a Startling Megaphone, my Floatstone isn't going to be doing me any good. Thirdly, a lot of Evil Tower decks are now playing Garbodor, and if they're playing Garbodor, then Kyurem does nothing. For that reason, I'm not playing Caldeo EX. The only other Pokemon I'm choosing to put in here is Genesect EX. Now, I'm umming and ahhing about this. I did have a third Kyurem, I did have an Absol, and the earlier videos you'll see I have an Absol, not a Genesect. I've been umming and ahhing about this. I've gone for Genesect in the end. Now, you can use Megalo Cannon, and it can be good against random things like uh, Caldeo EX. But to be honest, he's in there for red signal. You attach a plasma energy from your hand, that allows you to gust up a Pokemon from the bench. Now I know I've just said Garbodor is everywhere, and obviously Garbodor shuts off red signal, but it's certainly not the end of the world. It's a nice it's a nice option. As I'm playing a lot of escape ropes, and I'm playing Genesect, and I'm playing Lassonde, one of the kind of facets of my deck is I don't have to KO what you put active. I can, but I don't have to. And that really helps me to kind of maximise the efficiency of my deck as I'm playing. So Genesect can attack, but really it's in there for red signal. Genesect is very much a floating spot in my deck. It could be a promo landerus, but I can't play that on the PTCGO program. It could be a third Kyurem, it could be an Absol, or if I'm really worried about Vrizian Genesect, it could even be a Heatran EX. All of those ones I would consider putting in. So there are my Pokemon. Now if you look at my energy line, you'll see I'm playing four Prism, that's fairly standard, it works with Colrus Machine, you need Prism on Deoxys to do its good attack, you need a Prism on Thunderous in order to discard an energy with Thunderous Noise, and Prism activates Red Signal with Genesect DX. For all those reasons, you've got to max it out at four. Prism Energy, again, it's got to be maxed out at four, because I'm only playing basic Pokemon. If we look at Prism Energy, it provides every type of energy only to basic Pokemon, and colour to any stage 1 or stage 2's. There are no stage 1's, there are no stage 2's here. So I don't need anything else. That card's perfect. Now if we look at rainbow energy, I'm only actually playing free rainbow energy. Which might surprise some of you. I know you can't actually see the number there, but I assure you it is free. And that might surprise some of you, but to be honest with you, it adds a damage counter, hence why it's free and prism energy is 4. 
But honestly, the reason that's not maxed out is because I'm playing two basic lightning. And the reason I'm playing two basic lightning is very, very simple. Enhanced Hammer is getting more and more popular in Evil Tower builds, and nobody's playing Crushing Hammer at the moment. Which means if I play my lightning energy, it's not going to get Enhanced Hammer out. Now, I'm not playing any Professor's Letter, and I'm not playing Computer Search, so I have no way to search for it, but I've generally found my deck to be fast and consistent enough to not be a problem. It's not often that your opponent is going to be constantly enhanced hammering from turn one. That's going to give me a couple turns to get my Lightning Energy out. When I've got my Lightning Energy out, I can just keep one Thunderous active and just be raid and knuckling energy onto the bench with my thunderous that he's not knocking the energy off by him i of course mean my opponent i really 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 like my energy line i've seen a lot of people just playing four plasma four prism four rainbow i think that's one too few i think it's one too few for thunderous i like having nine energy for thunderous because i want that raid and knuckle turn one and i don't like being entirely vulnerable to Enhanced Hammer. Now, why am I not playing any basic water energy for Kyurem? Honestly, I use Thunderous more than I use Kyurem, and if I'm up against Enhanced Hammer, I'm going to be wanting to use Thunderous to attach energy more than I'm using um, Kyurem to Frost Spear. If I come across somebody who is going full on with Enhanced Hammer, they're going to have Sableye to reuse the Enhanced Hammer, and my Thunderous is going to knock them out very easily between Deoxys, Muscle Band, and Hypnotoxic Laser. If they're not using Sableye to reuse Enhanced Hammer, they're going to get one or two, and it's not going to be the end of the world. It's generally the Lugia-based Plasma decks which are more susceptible to Enhanced Hammer, and I ain't playing Lugia. Also, Lugia is very easily countered by Raichu. And if we have a look at my... Um, supporters. The first thing you might note there is my supporter lineup. 4N and 4 Juniper at this stage are absolutely standard. That shouldn't need any further explanation. 2 Chorus, you could go any way on this, with this particular deck. It's really good late game, it's really bad early game, so I think 2 is a good compromise. If you went up from that, I wouldn't really blame you. If you went down from that, I think that would show timidity. I think that would be being a little bit of a pansy, to be honest with you. I think you need Chorus in there for the late game. In terms of the 2 Skylar, especially against things like Evil Town nowadays, you need to get the Thunderous or Deep Kyurem going early. Skylar can get me my Chorus Machine, my Verbank City Gym, my Laser, my Muscle Band... There's just too much that it can get me. I would be tempted to put Professor's Letter in here because of Skylar, but I just can't find the room for it at the moment, so I'm afraid it's staying out for the time being. Um, in terms of Bicycle, I like Free Bicycle. It adds speed to the deck. If you watch my videos with TDK, you'll see that I generally get a lot of mileage out of them. You could switch them for more Skylar and more Colrus, maybe even Shauna, the one that allows you to shuffle your cards into your deck and draw five. But honestly, I don't like Shauna. I really do like the free bicycle. So that's why I'm playing that. The one Pal Pad is really, really good. I have fallen in love with this card. Pal Pad, for those of you that don't know, allows you to shuffle two supporter cards from your discard pile into your deck. And really, this just allows me to reuse cards late game. This is almost always used for Juniper and Colrus, which are the two best supporters, and Lassonde, which acts as my catcher. So, the, the rest of my deck might seem a little bit strange here and there. I shall explain my reasoning. As a side note here, I won't go below 15 consistency cards. Almost every single deck I see, even on paid versions of popular sites, has 13, maybe 14 supporters. I don't understand how people are playing 13 supporters plus Dowsing Machine and not drawing dead very often. 15 for me is an absolute minimum. And I know Skylar and Bicycle aren't the most efficient supporters, but the combination of all of them works quite well. Now, in terms of my balls, I love Ultra Ball. It gets 
well actually both of them get anything from the deck but Ultra Ball allows me to discard energy which fuels Thunderous it also allows me to thin my deck late game which is a skill which a lot of players don't use enough and you really should I really like Ultra Ball the reason I'm playing one Plasma Ball is for if I want a Skylar and I don't want to discard anything. Sometimes you really don't want to discard. I like having the one Plasma Ball for a little bit of variety. Free Chorus Machine is purely because you almost never get free going turn one. Oh, sorry, you get free going in the game. And Skylar allows me to search for them. I want four, I don't have the room. Escape Rope is basically there instead of Floatstone, and I'm a huge, huge fan of Escape Rope. Yeah, there are some situations where I really don't want to change my active, or I don't want to change their active, but I would rather have Escape Rope than Floatstone. Floatstone is often single-used due to um, Startling Megaphone anyway, and Enhanced Hammer is, uh, excuse me, Escape Rope is just amazing. They're hiding behind a regular Evil Tau, I now get to attack an EX. They're hiding behind a Snorlax, stopping me retreating. I get to kill something they want. They put up one Latias or one Pyro or something like that. I can escape rope around it. Now, as a side note, when I'm playing against Pyro, I'm considering Latias in this deck. But honestly, I don't really want to. Because I've got Escape Rope, and I've got Lassonde, and I've got Genesect. I'm not going to fight his Pyro. If he's only got one out, I'm going to escape rope. If he's got more than one out, I'm going to Lassonde and Red Signal around it. And the only way my opponent can get around that is to go full Pyro. If my opponent goes full Pyro, I've got lasers. And Pyro has a retreat cost of two. Which is a lot of energy to get rid of if you want to retreat. And I can also use Thunderous Noise to try and get rid of his energy. So that's why I'm not playing a Pyro counter. The only other cards I think I haven't told you about, I'm playing one Verbank City Gym. I'd love more, but honestly, it's best in the mirror and against Darkrai Evertail decks. And they tend to be playing Verbank anyway, so I'm just going to use their Verbank. I would love more than one. I can't afford it due to the space. I'm playing one Lassonde. Lassonde is an amazing card, and... I would love to play more. I really want a second. I'm going to try and find room for it. It's also really good with Palpat. And Lassonde is a reason I'm not playing Shadow Triad. Shadow Triad allows you to get a Plasma card from your discard into your hand. Now, every so often you could use it to get a Pokemon back or a Colrus Machine or a Laser or a Verbank. Most of the time, you end up using Shadow Triad to get a Plasma Energy to use Red Signal. I'd rather just Lassonde. There are very, very few occasions when using a Shadow Triad will be better for me than using a Lassonde. And that's why I'm not playing Shadow Triad. Triad. And Scramble Switch. I love Scramble Switch. I don't think I need the consistency from Computer Search. It would be nice, but I don't think I need it. Same with Dowsing Machine. And Scramble Switch sets up plays. Firstly, only playing free escape rope makes me nervous. And secondly, there's just too many good attacks there. Genesect isn't great, but he's really good against anything weak to grass, notably Keldeo. Deoxys can be a really good situational attacker. Kyura's Blizzard Burn is amazing, as is Thunderous Noise, but they're too expensive. Scramble Switch gets around all of this. I could change around it, and I know a lot of people in the early days of TDK actually played both Snorlax and Lugia, and Scramble Switch was included for those two cards. I disagree. And that should be the main cards and the main emissions. I've told you why I'm not playing a Pyroar counter, why I'm not playing Shadow Triad, uh, why I'm playing Scramble Switch rather than anything else. If you've got any questions about my deck, please leave a comment down below. I do try and make a point of answering all my YouTube comments, so I will get back to you if you've got any comments. Now, I haven't gone through the text I could use. Very, very briefly, there is Absol, Dark and Colourless, 20 times the amount of Pokemon my opponent's got in play. This does a lot of damage very quickly. The reason I'm not playing it is because it leaves things in my opponent's hand. They control how many Pokemon they've got active. And to be honest, I've rarely found it better than Kyurem or Genesect or Deoxys, which are the cards I'd have to cut for it. 
Heatran, which is a really the only good Fire Plasma basic Pokemon. It might be the only Fire Plasma basic, but it's certainly the only good one. The numbers... I mean, to be honest, with Deoxys, it gets KOs quite easily on Virizion Genesec for free energy. I don't hate my Virizion Genesec matchup. Between the amount of gusting I've got between Lassonde and Genesect, and even Escape Rope, and the fact that Kyurem gets one hit KOs fairly easily, I I really like my matchup here. So that's why I'm not playing it. If you're worried about it, I of course wouldn't mind putting it in. Latias for free awkward energy, but of course with Rainbow and Plasma, it's not that awkward. Allows you to do 70 damage, but it goes through Pokebodies, etc., and blocks attacks from Pokemon with bodies. To be honest, abilities, but to be honest, abilities aren't that huge at the moment. It's a good Pyrrhal counter, but as I've said, I think I can beat Pyrrhal without it. The other one I would consider, and this is probably the one I would most play, is Promo Landorus. And this is because it's really good in the mirror against Thunderous, and it's really good against Darkrai, which a lot of Evil Tau decks will fall back on due to how good Thunderous is against Evil Tau. There is a very good chance I'll drop either Genesect or my fourth Deoxys to put in a promo Landorus, but I don't know how to get that on the game because it's a promo card, which I have some. They were actually very rare in the US, but I have some, but unfortunately I don't know how to get it in the game. Now we're at 20 minutes, so I think that is enough about this particular deck. As I've said, if there's anything you would like to know about this deck, please ask in the comments and I will let you know. If you like this video, make sure you like it, share it, subscribe, all the good stuff. And let me know so that I can do more of these deck analysis in the future. If it's too detailed, not detailed enough, just write again. Please let me know if you like this or not. I've tried to explain in a lot of detail why I've made the choices I have. And the last disclaimer I'm going to give you before I go, I'm not telling you this is a perfect list. I'm telling you this is a list that I like right now, that I'm playing around with, and if you don't like it, that's absolutely fine. Feel free not to use it. I hope I've explained my choice as well. Ask any questions you've got. Thank you very much for watching this. My name's Ross, and you've been watching PTCG Radio.